Market Peak with Seth and Matt. All right, welcome everybody. This is Seth and Matt with Market Peak, P-E-E-K, giving you a little peak of the market. Uh, This is Friday, May 14th, 2021. In case you didn't know what freaking year it was. Uh, subscribe and like way over there. You can like us in this area down here. Uh, you can email us at wearemarketpeak at gmail.com. Once we hit 1,000 subscribers, uh, we'll get a website. We'll get a real email address. Uh, we've got a lot to cover today. We're going to be talking about IBM's microchip breakthrough. Uh, for those of you who aren't following what's going on in the microchip realm other than the microchip shortage, uh, there has been a bit of a breakthrough, uh, breakthrough, which is pretty interesting, also pretty important. Uh, shrimp, SHMP, National Shrimp, invests into, into some more equipment. We're going to talk about that, maybe get in a little bit to what that equipment does. Uh, also, uh, we're going to be talking a bit about inflation. Inflation kind of uh, is creeping up on us. It's something that Matt really wanted to discuss. So, uh, and of course, Matt's going to have his three charts, everyone's favorite segment. So we're not financial advisors. None of this is official advice. Do your research or D squared, all that cool stuff. Leave a comment with your thoughts. Uh, if you love it, if you hate it, if you agree, if you disagree, maybe you have a counterpoint and please share with your friends. Uh, we, we really appreciate, uh, the people that do share cause we do see it and we do see the effects of it. And so Matthew, uh, Matt, how's it going out there? Good, man. Yeah. How you been? It's been a couple weeks. It's been a couple weeks. We've both been really busy. Uh, as you guys know that have followed the show, I started a new job. Actually, I started working, period, to be honest. And uh, you started a new territory, I think, is a pretty good way to describe what's going on with you. So it's just a lot going yeah. on, a lot of extra learning, uh, a lot of uh, you know work, to be honest with you. So we're going to try to keep coming them out every weekend, but for, you know, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, so let's jump into shrimp. Actually, we got, I got swaggy stocks in front of us. Let's talk about that real fast. Cause AMC is like that commanding lead where you normally see GameStop. AMC is up there. It's about 30% uh, dissatisfaction rate. I guess we won't be able to put it. Tesla behind that, Palantir, and then GameStop. All right. So AMC's had an interesting run this week. Uh, if you guys notice, it was up, uh, I don't know, about 30% for the week. Settled at 30%. Actually, at one point, it was up 40% for the week. A uh, nice little run for AMC. Do you really feel like it's going to get above 15 at all, like anytime soon? Because that's where it seems to like, it doesn't really seem to cross 15 very often, if at all. What we've learned over the past year is that A, stocks that are heavily shorted have the potential to short squeeze higher. Sure. Sure. And B, that we're in an uptrend. Yeah. So in the short term, not sure I'm ready to make a call on that. But uh, in the intermediate term, yeah, I anticipate AMC going higher. I mean, it's a big, it could be a big pickup for another company. So many things could happen with this stock. True. So many people are paying attention to I've it. I've said it before. So much money to be made. I feel like it was said here first, man. If, if, they, if, if they could partner or get bought out by Netflix, and have Netflix show their movies in the AMC theaters for free. You could just do it for free. Like the Netflix movies are free. You still got to get tickets and all that stuff. Um, and then the other movies, people, I just feel like it would be a win-win situation. And I'm just saying. So, cause there's some idea. Cause yeah, cause there are plenty of movies that, I mean, Netflix wins Oscars and some of these movies, it'd be great to see them in theaters, but you can't, it'll never happen. So anyway, so all right. Uh, anyway, so Swaggy Stocks, that's what's going on. It's taking a commanding lead. Tesla, Palantir, G- uh, GameStop, GME is still struggling, you know, or struggling to catch up, but still in the hunt as usual. So all right, let's talk about shrimp here. So and the reason why is because they essentially invested uh, into new uh, electrocoagulation um, units, I guess is the way to put it. And if you've been watching it uh, over the last, uh, well, let's go to the six months. Six months, at one point it's down to 12 cents, jumped up to almost 90 cents, and it's been settling around uh, the 50 cent level. doesn't really want to dip below very often. It did at one point down to 47. Um, so we seem to be at the floor. They were talking about how they expected to be on, um, well, they expected to be on freaking NASDAQ within eight weeks, which is coming up soon. Uh, we're expecting the first yeah. harvest to come up soon as well. 
So, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting position that they're in right now. Uh, but investing into these units essentially means, you know, we're ready to grow. Everything's working. Go for it. Uh, do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And if you do a bit of a deep dive into what these units do and the service they provide for the company, um, you'll realize that this is kind of the final step uh, towards scaling a large operation sure. into like profitability. Yeah. These electrocoagulation units basically are uh, specialized uh, like filters. They use energy to separate impurities uh, from whatever liquid is being used, being filtered. Pretty much. It's and, it's a lot like the how uh, antioxidants take care of free radicals in your body. You know, it's just one of those situations where the only difference is in that case, it's being neutralized. In this case, it's being removed because what they do is they inject uh, charged uh, pieces of metal, very small piece of metal. And because they're charged, they attract, you know, other metals or toxins or whatever. So exactly what you said, it's a way of filtrating it. And the way the, the, that it works is it attracts all this stuff you don't want into the water because really... If you're doing a situation like this where you want it to be clean with everything, you don't really need anything in the water. I mean, I guess the food every once in a while, which in and of itself can, you know, oxidize and decompose and that's more stuff you want to get out of there. So that's kind of what these things do. Uh, and what was it? They're in, I think it was four for Texas and uh, 16 or something like that for Iowa. So Texas, they're expanding. Iowa, obviously, like... We know that they started their plan out there and they got the PLs going. The PLs are the pro larvae. So my guess is, I don't know if they're uh, going to expand what they already have or the tanks that they're using in the grow out uh, need these uh, specific units. Yeah. So I actually work in an industry that relies heavily on uh, um, separation technology. Sure. So... This kind of technology is would only be used in a situation where you would need such a fine filter that you would have no other choice but to pay a premium for, um, you know, uh, uh, in, in a technology like this. Or a specialized basically. service that can do it for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so clearly they plan on being in business for a long time. This is a huge investment for them. They, they're not outsourcing this uh, because they clearly are confident in their ability to use the technology uh, uh, to scale out. Yeah, I mean, for sure. They're, they're serious. For sure. I think we'll see this NASDAQ prediction comes true, though. Yeah, I, I, people don't think so unless they did plan on doing a reverse split. Um, but let's face it, if they're going to do a reverse split, like, I don't know, like they don't have much time to make it happen. It would have to be five for one, six for one. I, I think, I, I think he just spoke a little bit, uh, he was sp speaking in earnest. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I don't expect us to hit NASDAQ, uh, in, within that time frame Cause that time frame is like coming up like real soon. I think it's a, what, like a couple weeks. That was about six weeks ago, more or less. Uh, five yeah. weeks ago. So the end of this month, end of this month, yeah, end of this month, it's up. And I figured, and I think that's when we're expecting the first harvest as well. For those of you who are listening to this and don't know much about natural shrimp, they are a company that has patented a way to grow shrimp naturally without toxins, without pesticides, or pesticides, well, pesticides, without antibiotics, uh, and just grow them in a natural environment. Uh, and they utilize a company that provides them the post larvae, uh, the PLs, uh, the, we get them then they're really, really small. And so they have a company that uses natural selection to breed, uh, the best shrimp, shrimps that, uh, shrimps, yeah, sure. Shrimp that has a uh, non susceptibility to any type of stress so they can handle stress really well. And they grow big because when you're crowded with a bunch of other shrimp and, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, you, you, obviously stress can have an impact on how well you grow and stuff like that. So it's just really cool what they're doing. And this basically means that, Hey, you know, we're ready to keep expanding and ready to keep supporting, uh, the efforts that we have in Iowa and in Texas. 
So as you can see here, Natural Shrimp purchased approximately $2 million worth of electrocoagulation units. Uh, this is May 14th, uh, which was today. Um, so as you can see, they're, they're planning on moving forward, uh, which is awesome. Yeah, 20 of them. So yeah, four, as you can see, in Texas and then 16 in Iowa. It's pretty cool. Just saying. So all of you uh, shrimp fans out there, you know, small rejoice. It's not like, you know, NASDAQ or anything or harvest or anything like that but we'll 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 take it it's a little tidbit but it just it just you know heightens that sense of this company is going to be something big sure no doubt about I that mean, all the evidence is kind of stacking up now yeah that's and true that's true I think that's it didn't help the stock actually actually the stock finished almost exactly where you know where it started but at one point it was up maybe a couple cents and then down a couple cents but you know, the news didn't do a whole lot for it, unfortunately. But that's okay. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so let's move on. So IBM, two nanometer chip breakthrough claims more power with less energy. And this is massive because right now, actually, I'll go into it a little bit. So IBM claims its test chip can improve performance by 45% over current nanometer uh, commercially available products. So right now, seven nanometers is like what you're we're seeing out there. Phones, even computers, stuff like that. Uh, and so the fact that they're doing two, that's a pretty, it's not like, oh, let's do six, let's do five, like no two. Let's like make it like a third, less than a third of what it was. Uh, as far as size is concerned. Uh, it also is more energy efficient, using 75% less energy to match current for performance, IBM said. It claims the tech could quadruple mobile phone battery life, uh, and phones might only need to be charged once every four days. IBM says its 2 nanometer chip um, uh, process can cram 50 billion transistors into a chip the size of a finger, a chip the size of a fingernail. 50 billion transistors in a chip the size of a fingernail. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, yeah. two nanometers, what are you going to do? So, and here's the thing. Like I said, seven nanometers is what you're seeing now. Uh, AMD's Ryzen processor, uh, which didn't become available to 2019. They use seven nanometers. Um, and here's the thing, like it's, it's, it's a big deal because it generally takes, I think IBM, when they came out with a seven nanometer, it took about four years for it to come to market. Um, so it's not going to be that long before we're going to start seeing this. Um, and with the way things are going, uh, with power consumption and more processing power, uh, obviously more processing power takes more energy. So if you can knock that portion of it out, uh, it'll be really good for the environment at the same time. True, true. Um, guys, no matter what happens in the stock market, no matter what macro headlines kind of pull your investing thesis this way or that, always remember that technology is still on the march. And if you pay attention to that and you can identify early trends, um, you'll, you'll be a savvy investor and you'll know where to like what kind of careers to uh focus on too true no doubt about so that and here's the thing like if you're an ibm well let's look at let's look at the chart here do i have it here i feel like i is this it yeah there it is so right now it's at 144 if we look at the one year at the beginning a year ago is 116 if we look at the five year uh five years ago is actually 148 so it's almost exactly where it was five years ago uh, if we go all the way back, at one point it was up to like two hundred, uh, over two hundred, uh, and this was uh, two thousand thirteen. So right now it's in. It's I feel like it's in a good position. It's up a little bit for the month. I went from one thirty one to one forty four. Um, this information came out about a week ago, a little over a week ago. So it did have a little bit of a jump, um, not that long ago, but really just kind of is ticking up. But when these two nanometer chips end up becoming commercial. Uh, that's when you're really going to start seeing. And there's other companies that are going to do the same thing. IBM happy, just happened to do it first. So hopefully they're the first one to bring it to market. But it's not, you know, 100% that they will. Right, right. Exciting stuff. I'm secretly most looking forward to the breakthrough in video graphics uh, that's bound to occur. That's true. Once this new chip gets, you know. Because it's two nanometer. Recognized. You can put it into video cards. It's, you know, I mean, you can put it in a phone you can put it anywhere you want so that's that's very very true 
Um, I mean, my video card in this computer is 16 gigabytes, and it still can take some time to to render render uh, a movie or some. It is four times faster than my last computer. But yeah, I mean, I didn't even think of that. Putting in a graphics card would be would Video be insane. Video game companies. Yeah. I mean, semiconductor companies, obviously, but Xbox, K2 PlayStation, Interactive, Activision, sure, yeah, Sony, Sega. Oh my God, not Sega. You gotta get. Let me look this up. Atari, dude. Atari actually is a stock now. Really? Yeah. So what is the ticker here, dude? It's been a long oh. time. Oh, here we go. So yeah, NGC. it's actually Pong F P O N G F. Yeah, Atari. It's at seventy five cents Pong. right now. <laughs> I like it. Seventy five cents though. Yeah, it is. It is pretty cool actually. So twenty seven cents uh, back in you know uh, July fourteenth, not that long ago. I'm sorry, that was two thousand twenty. Uh, at one point, it was up to a little over a dollar. Right now, it's about seventy four cents. Um, if you look at the all, it's it was about uh, two thousand seventeen that it came out. But it's just kind of something interesting to look at. Like, hopefully, they plan on making a move or something like that. But anyway, getting back to this, obviously, there's a chip problem. There's a chip shortage. There's a lot of issues going on right now. Just a little side note with that. Cars haven't been able to get chips. They've stopped production. Nintendo actually is another one that had to stop production because we were talking about video games. Uh, the U.S. government uh, acquired uh, ARM, uh, giant tech by NVIDIA. So they actually acquired a chip designer, a UK, probably so they can nationalize a little bit, not have this issue. Intel's chief executive has announced a $20 billion investment into two new plants in the US, telling BBC that having 80% of the world's chip supply in Asia is not a good idea, which I agree. Intel's been having issues. Uh, they haven't been able to, I mean, I don't want to say keep their promises, but they've you know set some expectations that they weren't able to keep, and they've been having some issues. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll come back, but it's nice to know that IBM and I, you know, American company is out there just kind of leading the charge in this a little bit, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's pretty much all I got. So, uh, once again, if you're still watching, you like the show, please subscribe, like, tell your friends, all that. And we're going to go ahead and jump into inflation. Um, yeah. and while we talk about that, I'm just going to go ahead and bring up the VIX because, you know, I feel like. That's once again, it's our house chart. We're going to be going there anyway, so I might as well. And uh, you can go ahead and, you know, tell us what you think about what's going on with inflation. Okay, so I'm glad you actually brought up the VIX, uh, which is our house chart, of course. Sure. Because if you go to the, let's say the month chart. Okay. You'll see the spike oh, yeah. of what, 40%. And and I will say, sorry to interrupt, but you always talk about for the foreseeable future when we see a spike, it's going to get crushed. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. So kudos to you because you definitely called that, you know. So So I I guess my point is we had some inflation fear headlines driving market action, um, you know, to the southern direction this week. We had what seemed like a pretty uh, tumultuous couple of days. NASDAQ was down, I think, at one point, maybe 6% on the week before turning around. And yet, a couple of days later, Boom. a sudden reversal, yeah. a complete turnaround. Yeah. So markets are roiling right now, but they are still stable. The dip buyers are still in town. They haven't left. People are still bullish. And if you look at inflation and you look at what some of the bears say will happen to stocks um, if, you know, we really start seeing inflation pick up, um, it just doesn't square sure. with what's actually happening. And let me unpack that for a second really quickly. So the bear thesis on inflation would say inflation, which is a rise of prices, is going to pretty much run away from us so you're going it starts with a bottleneck in supplies yeah which is happening um, people can't get raw materials lumber wood capacity isn't there. super expensive right now yeah copper lumber raw materials that jacks up the prices of goods which jacks up the prices of services 
And all that di- gets discounted and in, back into the stock. Sure. So if a co- if you know as an investor, a company is going to have to spend more on goods and services and pass that cost increase onto the consumer, the bearer would say the you know the naysayers right now, market naysayers would say that's negative for that stock. Sure. Right? How is Apple going to jack up the price of its new iPhone by ten percent and be able to sell that? Well, here's the thing in today's market, right? You have the Fed supporting. Uh, various sectors of the market. So people's 401k portfolios are still intact right now. They're still spending. Sure. You have um, uh, stimulus checks going out. You have investments in infrastructure most likely about to occur. You have, you had a complete V recovery from the March 2020 crash. True. Yep. Yep. Uh, so my point is people are out spending, which means demand is still there. Yeah. So if, Demand is still there, right? That means wages go up. Yeah. Because these companies need to hire people to increase production to meet the demand. Hundred percent. Um, you know, is bottleneck. Right I think now. McDonald's uh, announced not that long ago. I think I'm pretty sure it was McDonald's announced that they're raising everybody's pay. And where I live here in 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 Miami. They are legit, like, all the hotels are paying more. They have to pay more because people, you know, don't want to go to work. Um, But even the company that I work for, you know, we are a company that sells stuff, and it costs more money. Like, a shipping container used to cost $2,000 a year ago. Now there's, like, $10,000 to get a shipping container from overseas. So just that is causing... What's that? Can, can you bring up uh, CopEx? CopEx? Sure. The copper chart? Absolutely. Uh, let's take... And go to the five-year time frame. All right, Global five-year X, go for it. What uh, You want the year? Uh, five-year. Five-year, okay. Five-year it is. Go for it. All right, so producers right now are struggling to meet demand. Um Anyone producing steel, raw materials, oil, any industrial input for the most part, ash, um, cannot meet demand. They cannot hire enough people right, to help them meet demand because people right now in the United States are being supported by a generous unemployment uh, subsidy. Sure, yeah. Right. Which is ending. Um, there, are, there are states that are ending the federal subsidy. Yeah. and. And there's also the labor skills gap, uh, which is kind of like a growing problem um, in which you have a lot of young college graduates not moving into the trades, yeah. right? Which And the trades hit producers the hardest because the producers rely on skilled tradespeople to run their factories, to help them, to run their mining operations, right? So you have like this double whammy, um, lack of labor due to unemployment insurance uh, being subsidized and lack of labor in specifically the raw materials supplier sector due to people just not wanting to have their jobs. Sure. Um, So that means a constraint on the supply of goods um, that makes it impossible to meet demand. Prices are going to stay high, um, but we don't have investors pulling out of a lot of stock right now. Sure. Um, which you would think they would, the bears would say they would, because now companies are going to have to pay more for their, to make their goods and they're going to have to pass it off to consumers. But consumers are still going to buy them. Yeah. Because wages are going up. There's upward, there's upward pressure on wages right now because it's so hard to hire people. Um, and it's like a self-reinforcing cycle. Wages continue to go to higher. People are going to be subsidized. The Fed's going to continue to support the stock market. People's 401ks are going to be intact. They're going to keep spending, keep demand high. Wages are going to go higher. And in that case, people can afford to pay more for goods and services. Yeah. So the stock price is still justified in many cases, in my opinion, especially with big tech. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I didn't really think about it until this conversation. But in a way, you know, the... I guess you could say the lower class, the middle class is kind of getting a little bit of a leg up. You know, they're like, people realize how much you need, you know, the lower class, the middle class, the average worker, the person who works in a restaurant or scrubs toilets or, 
you know, digs tunnels or, you know, flies airplanes or any of that stuff. And, and people are starting to, you know, these corporations, these, these pres, you know, presidents of companies and owners are realizing how important they are. And that's really made a huge difference. Um, so I, I just think yeah. uh, above all, like, you know, I, I hear what you're saying with, you know, the inflation going up and everyone can pay for it because ways are going up or it's mitigating some of the impacts. Um, but I, I don't feel like inflation is going to last for very long. I think you can't just hire people back, be transitory. you know, like people have to go through training, you know, and all the people, some of the people that you hire aren't going to last. And, you know, to really ramp up production, you know, especially in companies that rely on people with certain safety certifications like CDLs or, you know, the ability to work with, you know, uh, dangerous equipment oh, and stuff nice. like that. Yeah. Like. I just, I just feel like this whatever inflation that we're going through right now is not going to last very long uh, once people are able to ramp up production and find the people to start working again. So maybe to the end of the year at the most, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And you have technology um, making production of goods and services ever more efficient. Sure, yeah. Cost efficient. Um, and eventually these jobs will get filled. True. Um but how soon? And but look, the other good thing of inflation is that commodity prices go higher, which means housing. True. The price of your house dramatically increases. That's true. And right? people because supplies, building supplies are in short supply. They're expensive. Dude, houses and that are just expensive. makes the price of a house more expensive. And that's where most Americans have their wealth, still have the wealth. Yeah. In their house. Now their house is going up, they're going to spend, lend against it. And that drives economic growth. That's true too. It's a good point. You know, people taking out those refinance loans at a lower rate or or even yeah. just to get some equity out and do whatever, you know, buy the, another model, home or windows. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Get some new yeah. windows for sure, yeah. folks. New windows and that drives manufacturing. Yeah, that's true. That's very, very yeah. true. And the thing is, like now houses like for every house, there's like a bidding war. There's just not enough houses out there for people that want to buy. It's crazy. Yeah, my sister recently sold a small condo she had purchased, uh, you know, a few years ago for 20000 above asking price pre-appraisal. Really? Cash. Wow. Cash? Yep. Yep. Wow. Yep. Pre-appraisal. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Good for her, yep. man. We like that. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's go ahead and move on. And, and since we're going to do that, we'll go ahead and start with, with the VIX. You know, time for everyone's favorite segment, folks. Let me try that again. Time for everyone's favorite segment, folks. Three charts with Matt. So we'll start with the VIX. You kind of we kind of spoke about it a little bit already. Yeah. Um, I'll pull up the one month if you have any last minute thoughts on it, uh, and then we can move on to your next one. Okay. Um, so look, VIX is going back down. Had its little day. Uh, Do you still feel just, like it, it can hit fourteen fifteen? I'm hoping it does by next Friday. Um, May options expiration is Friday. I actually have a position out on the BXX, which is a one to one ETN sure. tracks, uh, tracker that tracks the VIX. Uh, it tracks volatility. Let's just put it which that way. Which anyway. did a reverse split, by the way. Yeah. Interestingly yeah. enough. So I guess it's at 38, 39. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's had quite a week. And I'm going to bet that it goes lower into next Friday. Um, I am hedged out a little bit, so sure. doing some downside projection. Absolutely. Um, but that's what I'm betting is going to happen next week. We'll see if it comes true. Yeah. Well, we're rooting for you, bro. You know, we, we hope it happens. That would be great. So, all right. So let's move on to HYG, uh, which is the next one that you wanted to talk about. This is uh, the U.S. High Yield Corporate Bond ETF. And which yeah. which chart do you want for this one? Uh, five year. Five year it is. Yeah, go for I'm it. I'm going to make a quick little simple point here. Um, if this high yield e ETF represents the riskiest companies in America, right? High yield debt being debt that yields high interest because it's risky to hold the debt. Yep. And we're at all time highs again. What does that tell you about the state of the economy right now? The Fed is 
supporting high yield debt to a certain extent. I mean, to a pretty big sort extent, of. right? Like, aren't they basically saying we're going to back all of the, you know, the shitty loans out there and the businesses that really don't have the yeah. the wherewithal to a, get a loan? They're, they're basically helping big players like BlackRock, uh, private equity firms, um, buy high yield debt ETFs sure. which supports, you know, a lot of companies who would have gone bankrupt had it not been for, you know, during COVID-19 or otherwise w- would have just been bankrupt because they have an outdated business model uh, that they now get supported. Um, but I'll just say, if you're looking for, you know, uh, like a rotational play, I think a lot of high yield debt companies, like a lot of small cap companies in IWM, um, and any company, like some, there's still some in the energy sector, any company that hasn't seen the massive rally that, say, the, the growthiest tech stocks have had over the past year would be a good idea because here's, here's what I think is going to happen. If inflation does occur, I think um, investors and the Fed will be able to engineer uh, a rotation out of tech that doesn't cause a market crash, a uh, rotation out of tech into value. Sure. Right, into high yield debt. Um, it's one of the last frontiers, to be honest. And I think, as crazy as it sounds, as bizarre the worlds we live in, that could be an opportunity to really hit up some of these riskier companies. Huh. Um, and ah, <laughs> that's just my contrarian view. All right. Well, I mean, it's it's definitely it's definitely an interesting play. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I mean, you know what? I mean, if you're looking for some serious diversification, folks, you found, you found, you found that one little corner of your portfolio that you've been holding on to that lousy 5%, just wondering where to put it. You know, you got that 5% of your portfolio. Out of gold, yeah. Out of treasuries and put it straight into high yield. All right, folks. Straight into Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah, right. Oh, geez. AMC. Let's be honest. Well, they'll rebound a little bit, um, you know, to a degree, but you know, we'll, we'll see. Best Buy for sure. Although they do pretty well Best online. Buy. That's for sure. All right. So I enjoy going into Best Buys for some reason. I still do because like, we're guys just... and we like tech and we like big TVs. And we <laughs> want to think about what we're going to buy next, even though we'll never fucking no idea buy it what there. We're looking at we'll never like, buy it there. Shiny and bright. Sure. I used to love, I still have a credit card every once in a while. I buy every TV I've ever purchased, you know, in the last like 10 years has been from Best Buy. And you if, are a techie though. I am. To, to be fair. And I like, yeah. And I like, you know, especially the TV, I want it to be pimp and Best Buy. Like if you're willing to buy last year's model, dude, you can get a t- like a freaking amazing TV for like hardly any cost whatsoever. And if you really want to cheap, Buy it, you know, right around Christmas time, and then buy it right before the Super Bowl, because the Super Bowl is when more TVs are sold in this country than any other point in the year. So all these companies yeah. will have this big, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all these companies will have this big freaking sale, you know, because people want to like, it's the Super Bowl. I'm gonna get a new TV. I would love to get a new one, but my little girl, you know, still ruining the one we have. So I'm ready when she's done trashing <laughs> everything, you know, then I'll buy a new freaking television. So, all right, let's jump into Amazon. This is the last one that you uh, had with your three charts, which is an interesting pick because I have it in my portfolio. It's one of the ones I'll, you know, can't say I'll never sell, um, but definitely one of the ones that I told myself, uh, you know, I'm going to hold on to for for quite some time. And, you know, thank the Lord I did because obviously last year was amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I think this year will be amazing for it too. Um, If you go to five-year chart, Okay. Um, it's going to break my heart when to... I realize how cheap I could have gotten it five years ago. Yeah, right. So right. 682, go for it. Oh my God. That's, and imagine buying it in 2008. Uh, no, was, I remember when it, when it became, I mean, when, be, I don't when even it want to think about it, be, turned into a stock. I was like, what is this? Like books online? Yeah. That'll never work. <laughs> Get it out of my portfolio. Yeah. As quick as possible. See here, here, and this also proves my point with inflation right now uh, as actually being a driver potentially of stock prices. So, if you look at uh, Amazon right now; it's setting up for a move higher. Sure, right? it's consolidating; it's building out serious support 
above three thousand dollars. Yeah. So I mean, and and the last time it did that, uh, you know, right around that sixteen hundred to eighteen hundred level, um, you know, hung out there for a while, then had a huge breakout during the worst economic pullback i think uh, recession time that we've had i mean since like so i mean last 50 years sure yeah it's a fortress it's just a fortress um and you know i think if inflation is really here to stay people would be pulling out of a company like amazon but it's i can see that they're still spending they're spending that's why amazon keeps uh, growing. They just announced too that they're going to hire like 50,000, 75,000 more workers. Like <sighs> it's just, dude, the, the worldwide grasp that they have um, and, and all that. I, yeah. I, you say, I hope they, honestly, I hope they split. I don't know why they haven't. Uh, it's 32, 22 right now. It's like just freaking split yeah. already. You know, make the share happers, yeah. uh, share happers, yeah, shareholders happy. Um, make it more accessible. To share happers. That, yeah. that's, a, that's a new, I'm going to add that in my lexicon. The share, share happers. happers. It makes sense. Yeah. I feel like I'm a share happer. Yeah. Something like that. Good <laughs> Lord. <of> time. <laughs> share happer. But yeah, I mean, shareholders like make them happy. Just freaking split the damn stock. You know, you could do it like four for one. I'm not greedy. I think yeah. it's, I think, I think that would be really good for it. But at the same time, uh, if it wants to keep, just keep going higher and someday become Berkshire Hathaway, uh, I'm, I'm cool with that too. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So I guess that's pretty much it. So, uh, you know, any, we, we do a predictions on the Sunday show. So come back for that. We'll talk about what we think is going to go on uh, for the week. That's for sure. Um, any last minute thoughts out there? Um, tune into our next episode and we'll talk about Dogecoin, uh, cryptocurrency and, you know, I, I think, um, the, the only thing that you can do wrong right now is sit on cash. Yeah, that's true. Very, very, very true. Very, very well said. All right. So yeah, I mean, check out our next show. It'll be coming out on Sunday. Um, I guess leave a, leave a comment with your thoughts. Email us if you want. We are marketpgmail.com. Listen to our other show because we said so. Uh, I'll have a link for that below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on Sunday. Boom. <laughs>